Hi, I'm Paul Bailey. In this video, we're going to take a look at lighting. What you may not realize is the camera sees light differently than your eye does. It tends to emphasize light and dark, and also color differences between different types of light. The purpose of this video is to help you understand how to make the best use of shooting with an inexpensive video camera like this one under a variety of lighting circumstances. What works and what to avoid so you can shoot a great looking online marketing video for minimal cost. In this lighting example, we're using incandescent light mounted on the ceiling and it warms up the subject and gives us pretty good light across the way, giving us good detail. You must be careful when you're putting your subject in a room not to put them in front of a very bright window because when you do, watch what happens. The camera sees the very bright window and unfortunately your subject becomes very, very dark. In this lighting example, we're just using the existing or window light coming in from the side of the subject. It's daylight, and you'll notice this side is pretty flattering and nice and bright. The problem is this side is very dark. Now the daylight's kind of bluish green, and you might be able to turn on fluorescent lights in the room to brighten up the dark side of your subject, and that may improve the problem with the shadows. If that doesn't work, the other thing we can try is a nice little incandescent light like this, and that will again lighten up the dark side, but now you have bluish greenish light coming in from the sunlight side and sort of a yellowish light from the tungsten. Not totally successful. So the next choice perhaps is a reflector. Now reflectors come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. This is a smallish one, but when we bring it up to our subject and bounce the daylight back in there, it's kind of matching the color and it could be more flattering. So that might be something to try. And we take it away, you see the dramatic difference. Well, we're outdoors. We have a beautiful, bright, cloudy afternoon. That gives us really nice soft light from above, and it's pretty flattering on our subject. However, you might like to fill in and warm the subject up a little bit, and that's where a reflector comes in handy. Notice this side is gold. That gives us a little bit of warm light. The other side is white. Could be just a simple little fill on the shadows. Watch what happens on our subject when we go to the white. Take it away, you'll see how it gets a little bit darker. One more time. Now we'll go to the gold. Watch what happens. It's going to warm up the picture. See that? Nice warm light on our subject. Could be like soft sunlight. Take it away, you see the difference. And the gold is fairly dramatic, actually. And with nothing, it falls back to just the light coming from above, and you get kind of darker shadows. Once again, there's the gold, now there's the white. And that helps get rid of some of the shadows under your subject's eyes. Very easy to do outdoors on a bright, cloudy day. We've moved to a bright, sunlit location, and the problem that you see, and you used to think it was important to use bright sunlight for pictures, the problem you see here is dark shadows, bright sunlight, high contrast. And today's cameras are very sensitive and may not be able to make a nice blend to make that work. Also. Don't let your subjects wear hats with heavy shade underneath their eyes or over their eyes. And of course, sunglasses are no good because you want to see their faces. And now you have a problem because everybody's squinting into the sun. Those reflectors we used in the earlier examples are not going to be useful because a shiny reflector will cause nasty sunlight to bounce right into your subject's face and it's just like they're looking into the sun. Listen carefully and you hear those bug problems that we have in the state we're in now, and that's a background noise you really can't do anything about. This lighting condition is what we like to call a good, bad example. I really recommend that you don't use this kind of lighting. It's called specular, where you have really bright areas and really shadowy areas. It confuses the camera, and of course, visually, it confuses the viewer. This is not a good lighting condition. You really have to watch for it, because it's easy not to see it until it's too late. So try to avoid this kind of lighting. This is probably my favorite lighting condition for outdoor photography. Whether it's still pictures or video, you're using what we call open shade. That means your subject is in the shade and you're receiving nice light from the open sky above. No harsh sunlight, no hard shadows, very nice detail on your subject's face, a very easy location to find almost any time, and probably your best option for outdoor shooting without any kind of additional extra lighting. This short video will help you get started. But for more help, be sure to sign up for my webinar or my one-on-one -on -one coaching.
MarketVid, empower your marketing with online video.